small island between India and Sri Lanka, but a big election issue this time around. Politics over Kachativa is only snowballing in the run-up to the 2024 Lok Sabha polls. As Tamil Nadu is all set to go to polls on the 19th of April, the BJP just ahead of the elections had revealed an RTI document which in fact made revelations that former Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru and the Indian government under Indira Gandhi had acted to give away Kachativa to Sri Lanka. This in fact has impacted uh, the India alliance, especially with both the Congress and the DMK, determined not to allow the BJP to take control of this narrative. But how much of this will have an impact in the Lok Sabha polls? That's a million dollar question. In 1976, Kachativ was declared a no-go zone for Indian fishermen after another agreement was signed between Indira Gandhi and her Sri Lankan counterpart, Sirimavo Bandarnaike. The agreement made it clear that Indian fishermen could not fish near Kachativu. The fishermen from Tamil Nadu say if they cross the invisible maritime border, they often face arrests, confiscation of boats and even bullets from the Sri Lankan Navy. One of them is 62-year-old Sekhar Pandyan. He says he was shot at, beaten and eventually lost a leg when he was attacked by the Sri Lankan Navy. I have always been a fisherman. I started fishing when I was a child. In 2008, Sri Lankan Navy shot me even when I did not go anywhere near the border. That was also the first time I took my son along with me. I showed him the border and he asked if we entered the Sri Lankan border. I remember telling him that the border is three to four nautical miles away. As I finished saying this, I was shot at. My son got scared hearing the sound. He was 15 years old. I lost my leg because of the Sri Lankan Navy. Sekar Pandyan says he has lost everything because of India ceding Kachitibu to Sri Lanka. But moving forward, he wants the Tamil Nadu government and centre to work together to help the fisher folk of Rameshwaram. Our children and grandchildren are asking us how we lost our property. Political parties gave away Kachitib. Now we have nothing. Won't we get angry? My family is asking me what will any government do even if we vote for them. There should be a middle ground reached between the two countries. PM Modi is a capable leader. He is taking India to greater heights. But as far as fishermen issue is concerned, the local leaders here are not giving the accurate picture of our plight. Both the state government and the central government should work together to settle this. Kachitiva border is just about 16 nautical miles from where we are. This is Rameshwaram. And more than politics, Kachativa is also a source of livelihood for thousands of fishermen here at Rameshwaram. Uh, most of them have already ventured out into the sea. They will come back by 5 a.m. tomorrow. Today is a Saturday. They've already left and it takes about two hours for them to reach Kachativa border. And then they will uh, fish and then come back. This has been a source of livelihood, which is why every time the state goes to polls, Kachativa and retrieval of Kachativa becomes an electoral and an emotive issue. Fishermen always hope that the ruling party will do something for us. The party that has been in power for 10 years now blames DMK and Congress for giving away Kachitib. The fact that it took 10 years for them, this is disheartening. We have submitted a memorandum to the BJP. We are only asking them for a solution and not asking them as to who is responsible. Even our kids know who was responsible. What is the solution is what we expect from the BJP. But many fishermen in Rameshwaram say that Kachtivu issue has been raked up only for political gains in the upcoming Lok Sabha elections. It is true that every party gets reminded of our plight before elections and after the elections. Nothing much is done. But when Jayalalitha was in power, she moved the Madras High Court and said Kachati belongs to India. But the BJP government didn't do much then. They could have also made an appeal along with the ADMK if they wanted to help us and retrieve Kachati. But the BJP said they can't do much to retrieve. Now they are again talking about this. Why why didn't they appeal then? Fishermen say instead of lessons on what happened in the past, they want a permanent solution to the issue. 
கல்வி கடனை நம்பி நாங்க படிக்க வைக்கிறோம் when congress was in power they tried to ensure the release of not just fishermen but also the boats that were seized by sri lankan navy and bjp came to power they also tried to ensure the release of those arrested but our boats are still not yet released our livelihood depends on the boats one boat costs us 25 lakhs to 1 crore at least 15 people's livelihood depends on the boat and our livelihood is at stake so when parties talk about kachati before elections paint us because we don't want to mere statements we want a solution illa adhaadu poduva meena varugal 50 years ago kachati was given away what we want now is to ensure that we are allowed to catch fish there and have access to the territory But the bjp's move is disheartening all we want is to allow us to catch fish at kachati i remember when i was a kid and i tagged along with my father in 1974 the sri lankan navy officers used to give me bun and biscuits we had a cordial relationship there was no problem sollradhukke 10 aandu kaalam aayirukna adu unmaiyile engalukku varthum varu bjp is turning to former tamil nadu chief minister and ousted aia dmk leader o paneer selvam to double down on the kachati issue on rameshwara Paneer Selvam is in alliance with the BJP but is contesting as an independent. Kachathiyavi Ilangi ki thare vaarthirukkar and unmaiye solli irukkar. Aavanangale maratha marithavargal yaar endra mathila and Congress um maanila thanadhu Dravida Munnetta Kalagaras. Janai kootanike inda prachinal indhalal paadikapatta meenavargal vaalgunda edangil uriyaga avargalukku paadippu yerpadum. Uriya uriya muyarchi eduppen. உறுதியாக மாண்பு பாரத பிரமாரில் கட்சத்தை மீட்டு தருவார் While BJP has made Kachthi a focal point of its campaign in Tamil Nadu will it find any resonance in a state where the party is hoping to make inroads with Purnima Murli Poonam Burde for CNN News 18Bengaluru Rural was formed after delimitation took place in 2009. Former Karnataka Chief Minister H.D. Kumaraswamy was the first MP of the constituency. But he relinquished the seat in 2013 after contesting the assembly polls. Following a by-election, Bengaluru Rural has been a fortress of the Congress and of D.K. Suresh. Currently, out of the eight assembly segments here, the Congress has five seats, the BJP one in two seats, which are largely urban in nature, and the JDS has one seat, Chandapatna, which is represented by H.D. Kumaraswamy. Bengaluru Rural is a tricky constituency for any political party because of its composition. It has urban areas, semi-urban areas, and a bit of rural areas, and even some forest area. like the famous savandurga hill that you see behind me this constituency has 27 lakh voters but 17 lakh of them in urban pockets and this is where the bjp is hoping that the urban voters and also some of the non local voters vote for the bjp and they'll be able to breach the fortress of congress in this particular constituency While Dr Manjunath's campaign revolves around his work as a cardiologist at the Jayadeva Hospital and the head of the state's covid task force. DK Suresh's team is focusing on how during the pandemic the MP wore a PPE suit and met covid positive patients and even cremated those who succumbed to the virus. Not your first election you've already contested here multiple times it's a area that's called your fortress. but this time round the bjp jds coming together putting a candidate uh, who's not from political background who served the society as a doctor does it change things for you sir this is not the first time this is the battle between the what uh, our ideology is there 
Our ideology is different. Their ideology is different. They are uh, trying to defame our uh, uh, things. But only thing, whatever I am doing, my hard work in from past 10 years, I am asking for the wages to the people, whether I am going to work or not, you have to decide. I am requesting them, I am appeal them, whatever works I have done, give, the, give it in a wages way. Hmm. You are referring to the guarantees as well. How much of an impact will it have, sir? Because it's being seen as Modi ki guarantee versus the Congress's five guarantees in Karnataka. See, Modi ji, Honorable Prime Minister, when he came to Karnataka in uh, assembly election, he opposed the guarantee name. Yes. Now he has uh, taken over the guarantee name and uh, uh, telling that Modi guarantee. I don't know what is the Modi guarantee. Whether the Modi guarantee is 15 lakhs, or price rise issue, or uh, unemployment issue. Hmm. What is the guarantee? But we Karnataka people, Karnataka government, Karnataka Congress government, have assured five guarantees in uh, last April, June, June yeah. last April. We have delivered all the five guarantees. How do you see the dynamics if these two parties come together in your constituency? Will it change, sir? Because that's something everybody is looking at. Can JDS tra transfer its votes to the NDA or the BJP in certain seats? See, it will not change anything. It will not harm me anything. I am in ground. I worked hard from past 10, 10 and a half years. 10 and a half years, I have worked hard. People have recognized me very well. They don't want to lose me also. The BJP desperately wants to win Bengaluru rural. That's why the party unleashed Home Minister Amit Shah, who held his first roadshow of the selection season in the state in Chanapatna, which falls under this constituency. Even H.D. Kumaraswamy has decided to completely focus on this seat, despite the former chief minister being a candidate from the neighbouring Mandya constituency. You're used to winning hearts as a cardiologist. Now, in your effort to win votes, how has the first few days been, sir? It's a different field altogether. No, earlier as a cardiologist, I was uh, trying to uh, fix the hearts. Yeah. Now, as a politician, because I have entered into this Lok Sabha electoral process, so now I am uh, trying to win the hearts of the voters. Yeah, yeah. True. True. yeah. Uh -huh. Sir, what, what are the challenges or what is the hope that you are offering to the voters, sir? No, actually, uh, we have been, because under the leadership of Narendra Modi ji, we are seeing a very progressive, performing and innovative administration. And also it's a transparent administration and country is moving fast towards becoming the uh, now we are placed fifth in the economy, so it's probably uh, is uh, targeting that maybe in years to come, India will become the third uh, biggest economy uh, economic force in this uh, uh, world. That is one, and also a uh, lot of uh, progress we have seen in the last ten years. Uh, India is recognized globally now. He is also addressing the uh, uh, is also addressing the welfare of the uh, people. Maybe uh, women empowerment is taking place. Women empowerment is taking place. He is addressing the drinking water issues. He is addressing the uh, sanitation issues, and also the farmers' issues are addressed. So all in all, it is a very progressive government. From water crisis to bad urban infrastructure and even caste considerations. This election season, the electorate in Bengaluru rural have multiple issues on their minds. When you go out to vote, what would you look at, sir, in terms of the promises that they've made, what uh, their governments have done, the state government, Congress government here, or the Modi government at the center? What will be on your mind? First and foremost is a, is a, uh, ensuring of uh, basic amenities like electricity and water for the residents of the new blocks. Apart from the fact that we, when uh, Mr. D.K. Suresh had visited our apartment, he was very nice to visit us on the appointed time and the date. Uh, we vented out our, uh, our uh, uh, grievances to him, basically also uh, releasing the stress on Kanakpura Road. And we, we asked him to kind of release this pressure, which is too high pressure, especially for 
communities like Mantri Sanity, which is 2,000 plus apartments, I think it's going to be extremely challenging when they fully get occupied without these basic amenities. We raised issues of the road conditions on Kanakpura Road, also the status of the footpaths which are definitely not walkable at all, not only by a normal citizen, especially by senior citizens, which the local corporator, Ms. Shobao also, she also assured that yes, we will look into this once uh, these things, the heat comes down of the elections, we will definitely look into it and see what best can be done. Sensing the diverse voter base, both candidates are trying to reach out to urban as well as rural voters. During the week, they interact with rural voters, while on weekends, they are busy meeting apartment associations. The results of Bengaluru Rural Constituency will give a very clear indication on whether the alliance between the BJP and the JDS has worked on ground or not. At the same time, it will also be a test for DK Brothers. If they don't manage to win this constituency, which is considered as their fortress, there will be question marks on their clout in the region. But if they manage to win the Bengaluru Rural Constituency, despite our alliance between JDS and BJP, they would perhaps then claim that a significant number of the Vokaliga voters, especially in the old Mysuru region, are backing them. In Bengaluru, with camera person Satish, Harish Upadhyay. For a possible attack, we will support Israel, we will defend, help defend Israel, and Iran will not succeed. Warnings grew of retaliation for the killing this month of a senior Iranian commander in the country's embassy in Damascus. Israel did not claim responsibility for the airstrike, but Iran's supreme leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei said Israel, quote, must be punished and shall be for an operation he said was equivalent to an attack on Iranian soil. Countries including India, France, Poland and Russia have warned their citizens against travel to the region, already on edge over the war in Gaza now in its seventh month. Germany and Austria on Friday called on their citizens to leave Iran. The Israeli military said it had not issued fresh instructions to civilians, but spokesperson Rear Admiral Daniel Hagari asked people to remain vigilant. We are prepared and are on high alert, both defensively and offensively, and we will know how to both inform the public and deal with any threat. Meanwhile, on Friday, dozens of missiles were intercepted in the sky over the Israel-Lebanon border. The Israeli army said others had fallen in open areas and no injuries were reported. Alapura is the only constituency that stayed with the CPIM-led LDF, even as Congress-led UDF won 19 out of 20 seats in 2019. Sitting MP Arif is seeking mandate for a second term. Congress has brought in their tall leader and former MP KC Venugopal into the Paul Frey. BJP has brought in their senior leader Shobha Surendran. With the three candidates, the competition is tough.
While hitting the campaign trail in Alipura, AMRF makes it a point to remind voters that unlike the other candidates, he has always been there for the people of Alipura, whether in the constituency or in parliament. Alipura was a constituency which stood with the CPM and LDF even uh, when all the other con uh, 19 seats went away from you. This time it's a tough competition. Mr. K.C. Venugopal is coming back and BJP Shobha Surendran is there. What do you think this time will be your advantage? Well, I was decided to conduct the next, last election with the K.C. Venugopal. He, he, was, he, he told me at that time he has a lot of duties in the headquarters. So he, could, he cannot contest the uh, last election. But it is saying that he is coming back after a, uh, a long period. He's, he doesn't know what is, what is happening in the parliament constituency. And always with the uh, people of Ker uh, Alipi constituency. That's why I'm, the tagline is Arif Arigilunde. is is standing with them. So I am uh, in the uh, development, con con concerned with the development. There are a lot of developments that happen to be in, uh, continuing in the uh, constituency, especially 2,660 crore rupees allotted for the doubling of the LP, Kaya Mula Marana Mula Malapi doubling, and the uh, virology institute is uh, allotted 10 crore rupees for the completion of the virology institute. So many development projects, the Kaya Mula Malapi railway station is renovation by the 8.5 crore rupees, and so many. Development is going on. I'm, I'm along with the people, always, all time. Yeah, so the people will definitely uh, win the LDF candidates. Congress MP and Rahul Gandhi's close aide, KC Venugopal, won from Alapura in 2009 and 2014. He didn't contest the 2019 elections and Congress lost the seat. This time, the party is not taking any chances and has deputed Venugopal to win back Alapura. So you had been an MP from this constituency, uh, but last time you didn't contest. And even when there were 19 seats, UDF won. This was the only constituency that stayed with the left. You're back here, well, and uh, BJP has also brought in one of their senior leaders here. So how are you seeing this time's election? That I think I am very confident to win this election, in Alapura. You are right. Last time we only lost one seat, that is Alapura. So the entire party leadership and party cadre from this area unanimously demanded me to contest this election. That is why, despite my busy organization schedule is there, I am forced to contest it. So, Mr. Arif, the MP, is saying that you were not to be seen even in 10 years when you were here in this constituency and you don't know the issues of this constituency right now. <laughs> so, he is saying that... Uh, that, that, that is... You are a media journalist. You can inquire to the people of this constituency. I will not tell anything about any my, my opponent candidate. That is not my culture. Whatever I have, I have done for this constituency, whenever I was there with the people of this constituency, everybody knows that. That is in the public domain. You can check that. You can check that records. You can check with the people. I don't want to answer that type of questions. BJP's candidate Shobha Surendran is seeking votes in the name of PM Modi's guarantee and development projects initiated by the centre. Ma'am, a tough fight here this time. Sitting MP of the CPM, Arif, and two-time former MP KC Venugopal, a senior leader of the Congress, is uh, brought back into the constituency and you're fighting against these two. What do you think are your advantages, your chance? 47 years ago, Alapura was bypass mila. कौन दे दिया नितिन गडकरी जी इनका मिनिस्टर था कैबिनेट मिनिस्टर था थ्री लैक्स क्रोर का इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर डेवलपमेंट एंड ट्वेंटी कॉरिडोर बिल्ट अप करना दिस इज गडकरी जी का सपना था वो टू थाउजेंड क्रोर का आलपुरा को मिला था आलपुरा को मिल मि, आ, मिलने के लिए संभावना है नहीं मिल गया मिल आ, मिलने के बाद सो मैंने क्या पूछता हूँ This is not Arif ka project nahi. This is KC Venugopal ka project nahi. This is Modi ka project hai. But which party's promises are appealing to the young voters of Alipura? When you go for vote, what is it that you look for in your MP candidate 
and do you have any concerns as a youth of this country uh first of all i want a leader who is non corruptive and who will help the youngsters of the nation uh, not only in education aspects but also in sports and uh, uh they should uh, provide more programs to help the youngsters of the nation to develop the youngsters of the nation you have an mp from the cpm here uh, do you think that that is going to change or it will be status quo uh, the, the congress has brought in a senior leader kc venugopal a former mp and bjp has brought in shobha surendran so what do you think about the politics i uh, no i think alif will win he, he will regain the spot in my opinion the candidate uh, should not bring religion into politics and uh, he should not take any advantage of the religious beliefs that the people have and uh, in that uh, in that case if if something like that happens we cannot call it a secularism okay my uh, concern is all about uh, the youth because uh, uh, the youth in uh, kerala especially are migrating so that uh, i need a mp who always uh, welcoming the changes uh, in the industry and also welcoming uh, new new uh, private uh, firm to come and uh, create more more uh, more and more job opportunities yeah. Alappuzha famous for its magnificent backwaters is witnessing a high octane political campaign development is a promise of all three fronts and all parties are taking credit for development projects including national highway bypass will the people of alappuzha who boast of a political legacy stay with the traditional fronts or will they usher in change With video journalist Ablash MS in Alappuzha Neetu Raghu Kumar